Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black green elf tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a ton of new cards from Kaldheim, including a 4 mana planeswalker, Tyvar Kel, which starts out at 3 loyalty and has a passive ability saying elves we control can tap to add black mana, so this turns all our elves into mana creatures. The plus 1 ability puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to 1 target elf, we get to untap it and it gains death touch until end of turn, so by untapping an elf we essentially add one more mana thanks to that passive ability and then the zero ability is the one we're going to use most often creating a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token and the minus six ultimate can also be game winning giving us an emblem saying whenever we cast an elf spell it gains haste until end of turn and we also get to draw two cards then to go with Tyvar, we also have three copies of Harald, King of Skemfar, a three mana, three two legendary elf warrior with menace. And when Harald enters the battlefield, we can look at the top five cards of our library and reveal an elf, a warrior, or Tyvar card from among them and put it into our hand. So this can even find our planeswalker. So just a great value card. And speaking of value cards, we also have the full playset of Realmwalker, a 3 mana 2 3 shapeshifter with Changeling, which means it has every creature type, including Elf. And as Realmwalker enters a battlefield, we also have to choose a creature type, which is going to be Elf in our case. And we can look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of our library. So this can provide a steady stream of card advantage, especially in such a creature dense deck like this one. And then at 2 mana we've got even more card draw engines with the full playset of Skemfar Avenger, a 3-1 elf berserker saying whenever another non-token elf or berserker we control dies, we get to draw a card and we lose one life. So if the opponent tries to take out our elves one by one with spot removal, they'll typically have to kill Skemfar Avenger first to avoid letting us draw a ton of cards, and if they cast a sweeper effect we'll typically get to draw a few cards to help us rebuild. And then Elvish Warmaster is another excellent addition from Kaldheim, a 2 mana 2 2 elf warrior, saying whenever one or more other elves enter the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 1 1 green elf warrior creature token, but this ability triggers only once each turn. Now do keep in mind Warmaster doesn't say non-token elf, so even if we're making a token elf with Tyvar, we still get to make a second elf token with Elvish Warmaster, which makes it much easier to trigger each turn. And we can potentially trigger the Warmaster in the opponent's turn as well, if we can play an elf at instant speed, which works with our Wildborn Preserver, which has flash, so that's another way of making a token in the opponent's turn, and one more in our turn. And then for 7 mana, elves we control get plus 2 plus 2 and gain death touch until end of turn, so this is a great way to close out the game, essentially giving our elves an overrun-like effect, and we can even use our Castle Garen Brick to help pay for the activated ability, making it a little bit cheaper to activate. And then we also have 3 copies of Harald Unites the Elves, a 4 mana enchantment saga that on the first chapter mills 3 cards, and then we can put an elf or Tyvar card from our graveyard onto the battlefield, so we don't even have to pay the mana cost. On the second chapter we put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each elf we control, so this definitely rewards us for going wide with a bunch of elf tokens, thanks to the Warmaster and Tyvar. And on the final chapter, whenever an elf we control attacks at this turn, target creature an opponent controls gets minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn, so this can be absolutely devastating against other small creature decks and can combine nicely with the Warmaster's activated ability as well. And then going over the rest of the deck, we mentioned Wildborn Preserver, combining nicely with the Warmaster thanks to Flash. It's also a great mana sync as a 2 mana 2 2 elf archer with Flash and Reach. And whenever another non human creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can pay X mana. And when we do, put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on Wildborn Preserver. So this is great if we have some spare mana, especially with Tyvar, turning all our elves into mana creatures. And sometimes it's also nice to be able to make one big threat as opposed to going wide with a bunch of tokens, since that can help us avoid running into a sweeper effect to begin with and that sometimes lines up better against what the opponent is doing. And then at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Jaspera Sentinel from Kaldheim, a 1-2 Alpha Rogue with Reach that we can tap alongside another untapped creature we control to add 1 mana of any color. So Lenor Elves this is not, but it's still a great way to get on the board quickly, help us trigger our Warmaster to make another token, and the extra mana definitely comes in handy when we need to cast multiple spells in the same turn. And then Wildwood Tracker is a 1-1 Elf Warrior that whenever it attacks or blocks if we control another non-human creature, Wildwood Tracker gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, so for most intents and purposes this plays out as a 1 mana 2-2, which is not a bad deal. 
And then to round out the deck, we've got some more spot removal with two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst, which can also take out Planeswalkers, so we can potentially deal with an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, which is otherwise incredibly effective against our strategy. And then two copies of Heartless Act, which can be a nice spot removal for two mana. And then going over the mana base, we've got some castles. We mentioned Castle Garenbrick pairing nicely with Elvish Warmaster. Can also use it with our Preserver to potentially get one more counter. And then two copies of Castle Lochthwain as another nice card draw engine, in case all the ones we had in the main deck weren't enough. And then we've got some basic lands, five swamps, seven forests alongside four copies of Fabled Passage, and then the four black green pathway, which is another great addition from Kaldheim. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable draw. Turn one, probably play a tapped castle. Turn two we can Preserver, and then turn three maybe Avenger putting a counter on Preserver. Warmaster is also tempting, although there's a high chance it just gets killed here. So I think I'll wait. And go with the Preserver line of play. Alright, blue-red. Looks like they have a Frostbite, but at least they're killing Preserver instead of Avenger or Warmaster. Harald could also be decent here. Yeah, I guess Harald makes sense. And then black or green is an interesting decision too. I do want black for Castle. Is this a game where I'm going to use Castle? Seems unlikely, so I think I would rather have double green so we can maybe Warmaster and Preserver in the same turn. And we found a Realm Walker, which is decent. If we found a 1-drop, then we could have maybe played Warmaster plus a 1-drop next turn. So if we draw lands, we can double spell. If not, maybe a Realm Walker. And Harald can start chipping in. Right, so double 2-drop it is. So I'm going to want to go Warmaster plus Avenger here. No real reason to main phase anything, because that just gives the opponent more information. Ah, they're gonna stomp Harald, that's fine. And now if they want to kill Warmaster, we'll get to draw from Avenger. If they kill Avenger, we still have a Warmaster in play. Which also pairs nicely with Preserver. We do have Heartless Act to maybe kill a Goldspan Dragon at some point. As your opponent foretells a card. Stomp takes out Warmaster, we get to draw. Another Warmaster to replace it. Don't mind if I do. And then do we main face Preserver or just play a Tracker? Probably play Tracker. I guess the upside of passing with two mana up is that we can potentially Heartless Act a uh, Goldspan Dragon. And then if we didn't have to, we could have played Preserver. But Preserver can potentially be played later to trigger Warmaster a second time, so that's kind of the reason why I didn't. That's just going to be a Bone Crusher. To play defense. Another Harald. So, killing giants seems reasonable. They probably have a counter spell here for two mana, which wouldn't surprise me if they countered Preserver. So, yeah, let's cast it and see what happens. And if they let it resolve, I can potentially pay two to put two counters on it. Thanks to the token we get from Warmaster. And then we don't have to play into the counter spell. And we'll pass. So now they may have wasted their mana if they were counting on using that counter spell. Six mana now. If 
foretells another card. Time for is definitely gonna get countered here if we try and play it. So we're at a point where we kind of have to play into those counter spells because we don't have any great plays. And we kind of want to start emptying our hand to eventually leverage cancel. Now I could potentially make a play at instant speed, but Heartless Act is such a cheap card and pairs so nicely with Tyvar that I would rather wait and use it at a different time. So let's play Harald, which I'm fine if it gets countered, I'm fine if it doesn't. Alright. We saw that one coming from a mile away. And then don't really want to trade here. Preserver, also an excellent blocker for Goldspan Dragon, if we can make it a little bit larger. Another Bone Crusher. And no attack. Alright, now that we have a backup Tyvar, I guess we can get one countered. Pass a turn. Opponent's slowly running out of permission spells, and we still have plenty of threats in hand. So don't hate how this is going. If our opponent were to attack, I would probably double block with Tracker and a token, so that we can trade off and draw a card with Avenger. But our opponent's gonna pass, another Harald. So the card I want to resolve is Tyvar. So we could go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. So now we've got a ton of extra mana. Can make a token, which also triggers Warmaster. And then we'll take action. Pay, let's say, two. And then let that resolve, and then we can pay again here if we want to, which I guess we'll take action and pay two more. Or we'll make it three, maybe. Make a 9-9. Nine -nine. Which could technically attack, although they could triple block with Haven, so I think we'll just pass and then still have Heartless act up. I can block the Giants pretty easily too. And then now with all the extra mana from Tyvar, we can easily empty our hands and leverage our card advantage. Alright, big Shark Typhoon. Although Preserver can block the Shark here, unless they have a Brazen Borrower, in which case we would have to Heartless act the Shark. Right, Frostbite Avenger. We'll float a mana. And then I guess we'll uh, let them go to combat and not have Heartless act up anymore. Alright, I'm blocking, so they probably have another Frostbite here. Oh, never mind, they had the Brazen Borer, so yeah, this was worst case. Didn't have Heartless Act up, and they can reset Preserver, so we're going to lose Tyvar. So there was an argument for just Heartless Acting the Shark, although then they could have bounced a token and still attacked with both Giants, so we still would have lost Tyvar there. Alright, so the lack of black mana is going to come back to bite us again. Although for now I guess we can Preserver make a token, and then, all right, they had an essence scatter, fair enough. Probably still want to thirst the shark and keep Heartless Act for later. They can flash in Brazen Borrower, which we can Heartless Act, and then, yeah, I mean, losing that extra mana from Tyvar really hurts, although there's still a chance for us to rebuild.
take three. Opponent is on empty. But they do have a big mana advantage. Ooh, this is great. Let's unite some elves. That can bring back Tyvar. Yeah, I think I like Tyvar. And then Tyvar could plus, so it doesn't die to a single borrower attack, although I do have Heartless Act as well. I guess we'll just make a token here. And then kill Borrower now. And then next turn we can overrun with War Master, and that should be game. We'll also get all the plus one counters from Unites the Elves. Alright, opponent's gonna dig. Don't know if there's any real sweepers in the blue red deck, I don't think so. Opponent's between a rock and a hard place here. Maybe could have waited with fetching until after we play Realm Walker to manipulate the top of our library. Although I think the plan here is to just activate War Master, so it shouldn't matter. Probably make another token with Tyvar. They will remember our names together. And then move to combats. Attack with all, and then I need seven mana, so four, five, six, seven. Seems good. And activate War Master. And our opponent explodes as they're about to take 20 damage here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. Turn one, what do we do? Sentinel, probably. Although I can't actually cast my two drop on curve because both of my lands are tapped at the moment. But we'll just play another tracker and if we do draw an untapped land, we do get to potentially two drop plus one drop. So I think the upside's still there. All right, so that can fetch a Swamp, and then we'll play Tracker, hit for one. So Zangoth Triumph, maybe a Rogue's deck. Could also double two drop, but now I get to Realm Walker plus Sentinel and play Realm Walker before it can get countered by a Drown in the Loch. Name Elf. Another Realm Walker on top. So we'll cast this. Tapping this. See if there's a response. Still worth it to attack with Tracker even though they're probably gonna flash in a blocker here. And then next turn, can maybe double Avenger. Heartless Sanct kills Realmwalker. And they attack, which mills my second copy. Do get to block at least. Warmaster is nice. So we'll play that. And Avenger. Hit for three. So we're starting to go wide. If they want to kill my creature, they probably want to kill Avenger first. So up to eight cards in Graveyard. So Thought Thieves are pretty scary, although 
Tyvar is pretty good too here. So what's the plan? Play Tyvar. I only get one real activation out of it before it's going to die, but it maybe forces them to send both thieves. So using the plus one's probably worth it. And then... Play another Avenger. Untap Tracker. And then send Tracker and Avenger. Sentinel can chum block if needed. Opponents at 10. Both thieves going face. And our opponent concedes, alright. Just too far behind on board. Then going white can maybe even activate our Warmaster, and if they try to kill our creatures with double Avenger, we'll get to draw a ton of cards onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Sentinel turn one, turn two, Avenger plus another Sentinel. So that's a great start. And then we can always unite the elves in the hopes of milling another elf. Opponent also playing green. Has to read Sentinel. And plays a Gilded Goose. Alright, so next turn... Not quite able to play Night the Elves unless we find an untapped land. A Lovestruck Beast makes a 1 1 and a Witch's Oven, so it looks like a mono green food deck. Tyvar will have to wait an extra turn. So the two Sentinels can attack. Not the most exciting turn 3 here. After a very good turn 2, but so it goes. Then we'll fetch a forest is probably fine. Since Tyvar makes all the black mana we need. Alright, so... What's the play here? Can play Tracker and Tyvar. Make a token. Seems fine. Can jump the Lovestruck Beast without any issues. And next turn we can maybe unite the elves. Alright, Wicked Wolf killing the 1-1s, one -one unfortunate. Tyvar down, although we can bring him back with unite the elves. Probably fetch another forest here. Tyvor can make another token. Warmaster is tempting, but I think we still go with the Planeswalker here. Hold on to your 
could also play a second Unite the Elves, which can then bring back Warmaster. Although... Yeah, I had to make a token before that could work. So I'll be unable to make another token with Warmaster. So that probably exposes Tyvar too much. Probably not worth it then. Because these only tap for black, and if I want to use Sentinel for green, I'll have to tap an additional creature. Trail of Crumbs for card advantage. And both at Tyvar. So, next turn we get the second chapter. Bunch of plus one counters, so we want to preserve as many creatures as possible. But at the same time, keeping Tyvar around seems useful. So double jump is probably fine. We'll get to draw from Avenger too. And I think I prefer Sentinel over Tracker. Alright, so now we can unite the Elves bring back Warmaster and take it from there. This can make a token, we can cast another Avenger. Tap or make a token, we'll make a token. Join me in battle. Next turn this reaches the third chapter, this reaches the second chapter, so we can potentially set up a good attack. Those at Tyvar could just let Tyvar go here, to be honest. There's an argument for like Avenger on Mammoth, Tracker on the 1 1, Chump, Chump to keep Tyvar alive, but that seems like a bit of a stretch. Would give me more mana, but if I have to tap my elves for the Warmaster's ability, then they're not attacking. So we'll just let Tyvar go. I suppose Tracker could have blocked a 1-1 human for free. Although, opponent might just be dead here, or close to it. Those all get counters. How many elves are attacking? Quite a few of them. So how many triggers do we get? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can kill... One... Two... Three... Four... Five... Six, seven, eight. So they'll be forced to use Goose for mana to then sack a food token, which they didn't. Alright, and our opponent explodes. So yeah, Harald unites the elves, putting in a ton of work in this matchup. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, with a bit of a slow hand without any 1 or 2 drops, but still keepable. Let's see what we're up against. 
Mountain and a Fervent Champion, Mono Red. Alright, not having a 2 drop here is definitely gonna hurt. Although, Realm Walker is a reasonable blocker. Red White aggro. And a Worthy Knight, so Red White Knights. Alright, I think we gotta kill the Worthy Knight before it's too late. And then next turn we can maybe play Tyvar, although Tyvar is better if we already have an established board presence. Double Fervent Champion's gonna hurt. And a Veteran, ouch. Take six. Yeah, Tyvar's not really gonna cut it here. So I can play Harald, hope to hit a one drop we can cast. Or maybe like a Warmaster to start making tokens next turn. Or we can Realmwalker, hope there's a one drop on top. Yeah, we'll play Harald. Adventure, not particularly helpful. Happy trading Harald for Veteran, but if Veteran attacks, it probably implies Amber Cleave. Double Veteran. Well, and a Rally the Ranks naming Human. Yeah, that's a must chum block. So this game seems pretty over. Swamp on top. Yeah, not much we can do here. Realmwalker, have a look. Land on top. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. We'll just make sure we can play our 2 drop on curve, can maybe ambush the Alsaid with our preserver. So our opponent playing what appears to be a mono white life gain deck. From all of the Skyclaves. Alright. Can ambush one of them. And then we kill the other. Probably. Play Warmaster. Next turn, maybe Realmwalker make a token. And then Harald unites the elves. It's going to be great if we have a few 1 1s. Alright, Apparition deals with Warmaster for now. So, I guess a Realmwalker plus pay to 1 for Preserver. Keeping Fabled Passage can be nice with Realm Walker so we can manipulate the top of our library, but in this case, I think this is okay. Could keep Green Mine untapped in case there's a one drop on top, might be better than pumping here. Alright. I guess never mind. That's a funny interaction that I guess I forgot about. Realm Walker is a changeling, so it has every creature type, including human, so it doesn't actually grow preserver. Alright, although this time we can.
Five, five attacks. And Helia too. And yeah, plenty of devotion here that we're not easily going to get rid of. So I need to unite the elves as soon as possible because eventually the third chapter can kill indestructible creatures too. Get back Sentinel. And we'll pay the one. No good attacks. Got a Flying Aspirants. Which is gonna kill us pretty quickly here, although they decide to stay back, I guess, because Preserver could block it for this turn. So... What's our plan? Let's unite the Elves once again. Before Avenger, in case we mill Warmaster, which we did. And then now we get to make a token. And I guess we'll take action here since we can tap Sentinel. Maybe tap Avenger. No attacks. And then next turn we reach the third chapter, or elves get to give minus one, minus one. And we can decimate the opponent's board. Second mall. Where does that one go? On Aspirants, so they can make it an 8-8 eight eight and attack. And they give it lifelink. So that happens. Counter goes on Heliod himself. So, alright, opponent decides to pack it up. So what would have happened here? Because the game wasn't necessarily over, although it was definitely going in our favor. So we could play land, have seven mana here, which means we can activate Warmaster without tapping any creatures, which is pretty strong, giving them plus two plus two. We still have a counter coming up, so all creatures here get plus three. We could kill both apparitions, which would reduce the opponent's devotion by four, so Heliod is no longer a creature, so our opponent essentially has no blockers, and then we only need to deal 26 damage, which should be trivial here, with all our creatures getting plus three plus three. So yeah, managed to defeat mono white life gain here with our elves. So overall, Black-Green Elves performed quite well today. Despite being a creature tribal deck, it actually can grind out some more controlling strategies as well, thanks to all those built-in card draw engines. It's the decks that kind of go over the top in some way that can potentially best it. Decks that are ramping into an Ugin the Spirit Dragon are going to be bad matchups. Decks that can maybe put a lot of pressure early on and finish the game with an Ember Cleave. Those are going to be tough to beat as well, since we don't have a ton of built-in spot removal, and we're not necessarily great at blocking trampling creatures, even though we've got a lot of 1-1 chum blockers available. So those are kind of the strategies you got to watch out for. But overall, Blank Green Elves seems like a strong contender, especially after rotation once some of those powerful L Drain cards go away. But that's going to be in a few more months. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.